The population of this province is certainly one of the most isolated in the world. The village of Kasha is dominated by the biggest monastery in Zanskar, home to around 50 monks. Sonam Wangchuk is one of the residents, and he's well versed in the region's history. This used to be the residence of the kings. The king ruled over Zanskar and the neighboring valley Spiti. The kings came to Kasha in winter. The name means Northern Palace. As one king followed another, the population increased and the villagers got bigger. 700 people live here in summer and 500 in winter. The weather is still warm. The harvests are over. The men weave and the women are preparing the winter fuel, for temperatures in the valley will soon start to drop. By the end of October, the only way into the region will be closed by snow, cutting its inhabitants off from the rest of the world for eight long months. The final days of good weather must be put to good use. This morning, children are bringing manure to spread on the family fields. A day of fresh air and games. Summer is short in Zanskar. The Zanskarpas have just four months to sow and reap the barley, the basis of their diet and of their survival. The Indian government has promised to improve access to the province by building a new road along the valleys, which will remain open in winter. Zanskar will no longer be isolated. But the road will only reach the foot of this valley. The work of linking the different villages will be down to the villagers themselves, a mammoth task. The people have begun to get organized, appointing a foreman to oversee each separate kilometer of the new road. Tashi is one of the foremen. Where does your section go? To Renan. Is it hard work? No, it's OK. My part of the road is progressing well. There are a good many of us who've taken responsibility for a kilometer of road. Soon the lorries will be able to reach Rinam at the end of the valley. The problem is that we're committed to finishing the road before winter sets in. It's already beginning to get cold. Can you feel it? The mornings and evenings are very cold. The sky is clouding over. If it starts to snow, we'll have to stop. Whilst work on the road continues, the families are preparing a welcome for the monks. It's a ritual that takes place every year just before winter starts. The monks go from door to door to give their blessing. The families prepare offerings made from barley flour for the occasion. For the meal, I think I'll make some rice. We have a side dish of potatoes. It's good. Now we have as much rice as we want. We have flour, lots of tea. It's great. Before, we had nothing except barley. The ritual is very good. It takes away all the bad things, all the diseases. The ritual. Buddhism pervades every aspect of the Zanskarpa's lives. All of these offerings are made to the Buddhas so that we may have a long life. The beasts will produce plenty of milk and so that the dogs, the cats, the yaks, the sheep and the horses won't die. Throughout their lives, every event from birth to death is an occasion for the monks or nuns to perform a ceremony.
The monks are not allowed to use money and may only eat what is given to them. Meditation is at the heart of a life based on simplicity and renunciation. Marriage is an important ritual. A wedding is taking place at Kasha today, and it's a big event for the whole village. The nuns have come to help the family prepare for the ceremony. When you give a bride away, you offer the guests beer with a knob of butter as a sign of happiness. The girl's mother also receives a cow in exchange for the milk she gave her daughter. Outside, the men drink, dance and sing in a ritual which becomes increasingly animated. 2,000 litres of Chang, an alcoholic drink based on barley, for 150 men. For each ceremony, certain men have the job of making the others drink. The aim of the game is to make them fall over. Meanwhile, in the Chokang, the warmest room in the house, the women surround the girl who's getting married. Tradition demands that a young bride should express her sadness at leaving her parents as a mark of respect for her elders. Here's the bride coming now. She'll get on a horse and go to her husband's house. It's time for her to say goodbye to the village. It's the final part of the wedding ceremony. Traditionally, men are sent by the bridegroom to kidnap his wife-to-be. As daylight fades, the young girl is tied to the horse which will take her to her new life. It's November, holiday time for the children. The mountain pass is closed. Zanskar is cut off. In a few days' time, snow will cover the valley and make traveling between the villages almost impossible. Conditions are far from ideal for the teams of men working on the new road. We've only finished half a kilometer. It's extremely hard work because the ground is so hard. It feels like breaking stone. The work gives us cramp in our hands. We can only manage to dig the surface of the ground. If we can work tomorrow, we'll carry on digging. If not, we'll call it a day and go home. Life with all its rigors goes on as it has for centuries in this Himalayan village. It's the season for hibernation and the villagers perform only essential tasks. The snow has come earlier than usual this year. It's been 10 days since the sun last shone through the blanket of cloud. The adults may complain that winter is harsh, but for the children, there are certain advantages. It'll take four or five hours to clear away the snow, and then lots more snow will fall, and we'll have to clear it out again. But apart from that, we don't have much work to do in winter. When it snows, the children can have fun. We go skiing. We don't feel the cold. The whole of Zanskar has been cut off for two months. The people of Kasha are impatient for the river to freeze over completely. In winter, the only way of leaving the village is to walk along the frozen river. A guide takes the lead. It's impossible to know in advance which route to take, so he relies on his knowledge and experience of the terrain. 
These villagers are traveling to Ladakh, where they will sell their butter and buy certain provisions, such as oil. The seven-day trek is tough and sometimes risky. Following the frozen river can be very difficult. In some places, there's no ice, so they must clamber over the boulders. One slip would spell trouble. The most important thing on this trip is to avoid getting your shoes wet. So sometimes, there's only one thing to do. The day the road into Zanskar is completed, no one will have to walk along the frozen river again. Many other things may also change when that day comes. Meanwhile, spring will soon return to this remote mountain valley. <laughs>